Great news, did you hear that there is finally a cure for hair loss? Let's go to CNN.com and we'll talk about it. Oh. Wait, oh, that's right, there isn't a... Let's talk about what, what a cure means. What is a cure for hair loss? What is a cure for anything? Well, a cure for anything means that you have a treatment or a few treatments to cure yourself of an ailment or of a disease. But with some of the claims out there about finding the cure for hair loss, these are, these are just treatments. These are off the shelf, everyday things that thousands of people take anyway. And some people are saying, well, this is a cure for hair loss. Well, let me tell you about people that are claiming to have cures for hair loss. They're most likely trying to sell you something. Because if you're trying to take something that's a cure for hair loss, but you have to keep taking it every day or every other day for life, it's a treatment, not a cure. We'll go down the list of what these treatments are, what the reality and the facts regarding these treatments are, and whether or not you should consider them for your own hair loss issues. The first ingredient for the cure to hair loss is topical finasteride. Now, topical finasteride has been around for maybe six or seven years, I forgot exactly, but I talked about this in hair transplant class, hair, hair transplant class number 13, where I was talking about the top three myths regarding topical finasteride. And one of the myths about topical finasteride is that there are no side effects with topical finasteride, and that's simply not true. I get emails and direct messages from people all the time, not every day, but very often, from people that are talking about the side effects that they're having with topical finasteride. Here's just one example, where a patient was using oral finasteride, cut that out because he was getting side effects, was sold a bill of goods with the topical finasteride, and sure enough, got the same side effects, talking about um, loss of erection and sexual, other sexual side effects and even testicular ache that seem to get worse over time. Now the great thing about topical finasteride is that there do seem to be fewer reported instances of side effects than with oral finasteride, but the problem is also that you're having fewer people saying they're getting the same positive results from topical versus oral, which means and I've been saying this before, I said it in uh, hair transplant class 13, that topical finasteride simply isn't as effective as oral finasteride. That's both for the positive side effects or the intended side effects versus the negative side effects. But if you wanna get into the efficacy of topical finasteride, there's one thing to remember that's really important. The past several years, I've been talking about how generic versus name brand finasteride, otherwise known as Propecia or Proscar, have differences in their actual efficacy. And the reason being is because generic finasteride coming from all kinds of different manufacturers around the world has a lower level of consistency for quality. And guess what almost every topical finasteride formulation is using? Generic finasteride powder. There might be some sources of topical finasteride that are actually using the name brand product, but if there are, they're very rare. I haven't heard of any. So the issue becomes one of generic effectiveness or generic efficacy. Um, a lot of people say that there's no difference, and for a lot of people that is the case. But I know for a fact that there is a difference for a lot of people. That's something to keep in mind. I've talked about it on my YouTube channel. I've talked about it on my website, hairtransplantmentor.com. I've talked about it on various forums for at least 10 years now with people chiming in to support my position saying that they have had reduced efficacy on generic as well. And I've talked about it for a few years on Spencer Coburn's The Bald Truth. The second ingredient in the cure or the supposed cure for hair loss is low level laser light therapy, low level, low level or LLLT, which I discussed in hair transplant class number six. Now, low level laser therapy 
can be effective. I've never really heard of any side effects with uh, low-level laser therapy. Um, I heard one patient say that it causes hair to, to thin out. Um, and there can be some positive results. But the problem with this is that if you see a really great result, like something you'd see that would be considered great for even finasteride, that's not what you can expect. That is definitely the exception, not the rule. And it is nowhere near what you should expect if you decide to undertake any form of laser therapy. The best you can normally expect is a cessation or stopping of hair loss or a slowing of your hair loss and maybe a thickening, maybe some sort of reversal on a small scale that is difficult for other people to notice, but you do notice. That's what I'm talking about. That's minimal. If you do get a great response, that's awesome for you. Just don't expect it. Number three, the third ingredient in the so-called cure for hair loss is one of my favorite ingredients, and that's Sol Palmetto. Now, Sol Palmetto has been mentioned for at least 20 years since the first edition of The Bald Truth by Spencer Coburn. He was the first person to talk about Sol Palmetto, and the recommended dosage was 160 milligrams twice a day, and that's been picked up by uh, and confirmed by different outlets like WebMD and um, other resources. But the problem with Sol Palmetto is it's reducing DHT and there are people having side effects. You can search online and find examples of people that have talked about having the same side effects as finasteride. And on top of that, there are actually two studies, actually more than two, but there are two studies that I found where the sexual side effects were verified, both reduction of libido and impotence. But Joe, Sol Palmetto's a natural product. How could it be so bad? Well, cyanide's natural too, but you don't see me popping that. The fact is that Nature's Pharmacy has some of the deadliest and most controversial drugs in its cabinet. So just because it's natural doesn't mean it's gonna be good for you. And this reflects a bigger issue, and that is side effects from natural and synthetic means of reducing DHT. So all we conclude is that it's not so much the way that it's being reduced, it's the fact that it's being reduced that's causing the side effects. So reduction of DHT, no matter how you're doing it, can have the risk of sexual side effects. So the bigger issue is that if you actually combine the two, topical or oral finasteride and cell palmetto, and you're afraid of side effects, you just doubled the risk or doubled the odds of having sexual side effects. Translation, don't do it. Another ingredient in the recipe for the cure for hair loss is biotin. Oh God. Otherwise known as vitamin B7 and sometimes known as vitamin BH. Now biotin is actually found in a lot of the foods we eat and if you have any sort of deficiency in vitamin B7 or, or biotin, it means that you're really malnourished. I mean, it's, it's really quite difficult not to have enough of this in your system. And if you are one of these people that, that do think that they need to start taking biotin, um, you need to be careful with the dosage because sometimes we're like in, in some doses, like higher doses, vitamin B7, biotin, vitamin BH, whatever you want to call it, can actually inhibit the absorption of vitamin B5 and it can actually interact with some other vitamins and medications and cause, it can cancel things out to where you're not getting what you need to get in your diet. So biotin is really not something you need um, if you have a, a balanced diet, if you're, if you're eating normal food instead of eating crap. So stop eating the crap. Now, if you want an alternative to biotin that does not have side effects, does not have any interactions with other known vitamins or medications, you can take MSM, otherwise known as methyl sulfonyl methane. What MSM will do is it will help to kickstart your hair growth. It doesn't create new hairs. It doesn't, you know, extend the, um, the antigen cycle or anything like that, or kick any hairs out of telogen. It just makes your hair healthier. It makes it grow faster. In fact, in some cases it can grow up to two times faster. And with that, the hair can look healthier. Um, shinier, um, and that's a good thing, right? So if you're going to take biotin, don't take MSM. If you do take biotin and you see any benefits, it means that you don't have enough of your diet. Again, put down the pizza and just eat right. Now the final ingredient in the supposed cure for hair loss is fish oil. 
Now, I remember when fish oil was like really big, like everyone was saying, take fish oil, take fish oil, take fish oil, it'll cure everything. And not literally, but uh, it was really popular years ago. And it seems to have found a resurgence um, for the hair loss community in some circles anyway, but it, there's really no evidence that it helps with hair loss. In fact, um, there's evidence that can induce hair loss. It can cr uh, create hair loss, which is something none of you want, obviously. Um, but the, the, the health benefits of fish oil in general are now being questioned. In fact, the New York Times uh, reviewed 22 studies and found that only two studies found any sort of benefits with fish oil. None of them were hair growth. And the other 20 uh, studies showed zero benefit. Now, if you do feel like taking a fish supplement or fish oil supplement has helped you, that simply means that you're not getting enough omega fatty or omega-3 fatty acids in your diet, which means eat some fish once in a while. I mean, again, put down the pizza. These are things that you can get in your food every day just from eating properly. I mean, just don't eat junk food. And the thing with, or the problem with um, uh, fish oil today that we're discovering, there are many cases where it can be bad for you simply because fish oil is highly susceptible to oxidation. In other words, it breaks down or it goes rancid really fast. In other words, it gets rotten. And when you're putting something like that in your body, it can actually have a negative effect. In fact, studies have shown that when you're taking fish oil, you actually have potential of lowering your testosterone levels. Boom, again, with the negative issues that are opposite of what we want to create from these supplements. So you need to be careful with this stuff. Um, fish oil, not so great for you, sometimes bad for you. Tall palmetto, sometimes bad for you. Same side effects as finasteride. Topical finasteride, side effects like this guy. Laser, not so bad, can be okay. Biotin, nothing. Nothing can even be bad for you. So the message here is, you know, if you want to make sure that you're healthy enough to have proper hair growth, avoid these supplements. They're, most of them are, are just crap. I mean, they're, they're really not doing anything for you. And in fact, in some cases, they're actually harming you and having the opposite effect of what you want them to do for you. The best way to get this cure for hair loss is to simply eat right. You can eat your meats, your red meat, your fish, your chicken. Just make sure that if you're going to eat beef, make sure it's grass-fed and organic with uh, no hormones, no antibiotics. It's really good for you, actually. Uh, chicken, same thing. Free-range chicken with no hormones, no antibiotics. Um, you know, chickens that run around and eat bugs like they're supposed to. Um, and then, of course, your fish. Um, you know, it's recommended that if you're going to eat salmon, have like Alaskan wild salmon, things like that. That's, that's going to have the lower mercury levels and just better for you overall. So my advice to you is if you want the cure for hair loss, um, incorporate that into your daily life with what you eat, your normal nutrition levels, change your lifestyle. And one place that you can start with that is cutting back on your sugar intake because sugar is evil. And... Um, I got a link down below to um, a video by Dr. Robert Lustig, Lustig, I think it's Lustig, uh, on the evils of sugar. And um, long story short, it causes internal inflammation, and inflammation is one of the enemies of healthy hair. So check that out, and then start exploring more about proper eating. And it doesn't mean eating, you know, eating salad all the time. Um, you have your proper meats and then um, green leafy vegetables and that should do it for you. Um, so check it out. And um, I'll tell you right now that since I started having that kind of nutrition level for the past several years, my hair, not just the transplanted hair, but including the transplanted hair and the donor region has been healthier than it's ever been. Worked wonders for me. My hair, I, I feel like my hair um, looks better. It behaves better than it did um, after my transplants were, were all, all finished. So um, something to consider. There is no cure for hair loss, only treatments. And the only or the closest thing you can get to a cure is the food, the food that you eat. So keep that in mind. So that's it for hair transplant class number 14. 14? I think it's 14. Um, and stay tuned for more episodes coming up soon. I got so much more content to push out to you. Uh, click subscribe if you haven't subscribed so far. And make sure you click the little bell 
and that'll get you the notifications um, for when I do upload more content. Thanks for watching and peace. <laughs>